Okay, in this video we have a goal of finding the volume of a torus with an inner radius of A and an outer radius of B. So I've drawn a picture like this. So notice a torus is like a donut shape and we've got this outer circle like kind of running like that and the radius of that outer circle is given by B and then at every point on the outer circle we put another circle and the radius of that is A. So that's what we mean by this inner radius and that's outer radius. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get a handle on what maybe the equation of this torus is and we'll do that in the following way. So let's say that you are standing on the z-axis and you're looking down. So let's say looking down from the z-axis. So you're standing up there and looking straight down. What picture might you see? So you'll see the following picture. Let's say this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So you'll see uh, two circles, one inside of the other. So you'll see something like this. So here, I'll maybe make this red. So we'll see this circle first and this circle second. Great. And then what's happening is that there's a little circle going at every point here in and out of the xy plane. And now notice that to the point right in between these two circles, we know that radius. So that radius is equal to the outer radius of this torus. So in other words, that is B. So this point right here is B. Great. But now, we also know the distance from the center to these inner and outer circles, and that's going to be given by the distance from B to uh, the inner and outer spot, in other words, the inner radius. So that makes this point right here B plus A, and it makes this point back here B minus A. Okay, so now let's notice that there's a lot of radial symmetry here. In other words, it looks like something that might do well to use polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and use polar coordinates for a minute. So notice we could see our, um, if we put a ray going out from the origin, notice the point that we're interested in is between these two points along the ray. In other words, our R is going to be between B minus A and B plus A, like that. Okay, good. And then our theta is going to be everything between zero and two pi. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is think about this R ray coming out from the origin and I want to slice this uh, torus along that ray including the z-axis. Okay, so in other words we want to slice along uh, the plane defined by this ray which is in orange right here. Okay, so notice that's gonna give us the following picture. So we have this, which we'll think of this as like the R axis now, this is like the radial axis, and then we have Z up here, which is like the Z axis. And now notice at this point, we have the Z coordinate is zero because we're along the outside edge of the torus. Here the Z coordinate is zero, but in between, we're along a circle. And so we're actually gonna be along a circle like this, so I can put here is B minus A, and then up here is B plus A, and we're gonna be along this circle right here, which is centered at B and has a radius of A. Okay, great. That's happening in this R and Z plane. So now notice, we know the equation of a circle in a plane like that. So that's going to be given by R minus B squared. Great. And then plus Z squared equals um, A squared. Great. 
So notice the center of the circle is B0, the radius of the circle is A, so we've used the standard formula for a radius of a circle. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we can do is maybe go ahead and put this back into rectangular coordinates just for interest, but we'll actually solve this using so-called cylindrical coordinates. So notice we could have R here um, and rewrite that in rectangular coordinates as x squared plus y squared under the square root. And then we have this is uh, minus b squared plus z squared equals a squared. Okay, so we've got something like that going on. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll start from that point. Okay, so on the last board we argued that the re rectangular version of this torus is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared quantity minus b all squared plus z squared equals a squared, where b and a are the inner and, and outer radius. And then in cylindrical coordinates, which is going to be more useful for us, and so that's like sort of partial polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. Our x and y are in polar coordinates, and then our z is in rectangular coordinates. So that's given by r minus b squared plus z squared equals a squared. Now the next thing that we'll do is notice that this torus, which may be I'll call t, can be written in terms of those spherical coordinates in the following way. So it's going to be all points um, <clears throat> r, theta, and z, where z goes from um, what you get from solving this and taking a negative square root to what you get from solving this and taking a positive square root. In other words, we're going to get negative the square root of a squared uh, minus r minus b quantity squared. So that's what you get from solving for z and taking a negative square root. Um, all the way up to the same thing with a positive square root. So a squared minus r minus b quantity squared. So we've got something like that. So that's our z bounds. Now the next thing that we can see is that our r and theta bounds are given by what we described before. So I'll just go ahead and write those in. So notice r is between b minus a and b plus a and then theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So that defines our torus. So the next thing we can notice is that the volume of that torus is going to be given by the triple integral over that torus dv. But then since we're doing this in cylindrical coordinates, we have to keep in mind what dv is. And then when we write everything in, so let's put the theta integral on the outside. So we'll have 0 to 2 pi. And then we'll have the r integral next, so we're going to have uh, b minus a to b plus a. And then we'll have the z integral next, so we'll have z from this lower thing to the upper thing, so negative the square root of a squared minus r minus b quantity squared, all the way up to the same thing positive, a squared minus r minus b quantity squared. And then we have our dv component, which is going to be r dz dr d theta. <clears throat> Again, remember from polar coordinates, changing to polar coordinates gives us an r dr d theta, but then since our rectangular coordinates are kind of keep, but since our z coordinate is still rectangular, we don't get anything extra from that. So this is in fact the integral that we want to calculate. So I'll move that to the top and then we'll do this integral. Okay, so now we're ready to do this integral. So notice that our first integral is with respect to z. The function that we're integrating with respect to z is an even function, and we're going from negative a value to positive the same value. So what that means is I can get rid of this bottom um, bound of integration if I multiply the whole thing by 2. Okay, good. So now, notice that we can do this z antiderivative, which the antiderivative of dz is just z. So that's going to give us twice the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from b minus a to b plus a, and now we have z, which we're going to evaluate from 0 to the square root of a squared uh, minus uh, r minus b uh, quantity squared. All of that's under a square root, 
I missed an R out here, and then we're going to have dr d theta. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from b minus a to b plus a, and then we'll have r times the square root of a squared minus r minus b quantity squared dr d theta. Okay. Now the next thing that I want to notice is that we have a function of r times a function of theta. In this case, the function of theta is just 1, but that's going to allow us to turn this into two integrals of a single variable. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta. Notice I lost my 2, so let's put my 2 back. Good. Um, and that's from changing from an even function or using the fact that we had an even function. And now I have the integral from 0, sorry, from b minus a to b plus a of r times the square root of a squared minus r minus b quantity squared dr. Great. So I've got a single uh, integral and another single integral. So notice that's going to give me 4 times pi. So that's what I get from this. And then the integral from b minus a to b plus a of this quantity. So let's see, we have r times the square root of a squared minus r minus b quantity squared dr. So now we have just um, a single integral to do. So good, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that to the top and we'll finish it off. So far, we've argued ourselves down to having to do this single integral. So the volume of this torus is 4 pi. The integral with respect to r from b minus a to b plus a of r times a squared minus the quantity r minus b squared. All of that's under a square root. So I'm going to go ahead and do a u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal r minus b. Great. That's going to make du equal dr. So notice this guy is going to be du. That guy is going to be u. And no, now notice that uh, this is the same thing as saying r equals u plus b. So here this thing is going to change to u plus b. Okay, great. Now let's see what happens to our bounds of integration when r is equal to b minus a. Well, let's see what u is. So u will be equal to r, um, sorry, b minus a minus b. So that means u is going to be minus a. Great. And now up here, when r is equal to b plus a, u will be equal to a. So we've got something like that going on. So I think that's gonna be some nice simplification. Notice we have four pi, the integral from minus a to a of u plus b times the quantity a squared minus u squared du. Good. But now we can split this up into two integrals. We can split this up in the integral uh, 4 pi minus a to a of, um, let's see what we have. We have uh, u times uh, a squared minus u squared plus b times the square root of a squared minus u squared. So we've got something like that. Now this is all with respect to du. Okay, good. Now, notice that this guy right here is an even function. This guy right here is an odd function, which makes their product equal to an odd function. Now we're integrating an odd function over a region which is symmetric about the um, origin, which makes this whole thing go to zero. Good. And now let's also notice that this guy is an even function, which means we can use the same trick we had before. We can multiply this by 2 and take the integral from uh, 0 to a. But actually, I don't think this is that important in this case. What I'll do is I'll just use the fact that this is 0, and then we'll geometrically interpret this. So notice this is 4 pi times b times the integral from minus a to a of the square root of a squared minus u squared du. 
All right, now I want to calculate that integral by geometric interpretation. So notice if I have uh, the u-axis here, and then uh, let's maybe call this the v-axis, and we'll say that this is equal to v. Notice that's the same thing as saying u squared plus v squared equals a squared. So that's not too hard to check. Um, which that's a circle of radius a. So we have this circle of radius a like that. And I should say here, it's only the top half of the circle of radius a because we only have a positive square root here. But we know what the area of a circle of radius a is and that's exactly what this region um, is giving us. It's giving us half the area of a circle of radius a. So we can use that. The area of this region is going to be one half times pi a squared. Okay, so now putting this all together, we know that this integral right here is representing the area of that region. So that's going to give us four pi b times one half a squared. In other words, we have two pi a squared b. So that is the volume of our torus. Okay, good. So that's a good place to end this video.